Okay, Dr. Ali, you can start yeah. now. Thank you very much for your Thank you again. Thank you. Uh, are you ready? Already, yeah. You can start. Can you now. hear me clearly? And uh, the slides are uh, obvious. Yeah, yeah. I'm you? hearing you, and the slides is appear also. Okay, Everything thank you is. very much. Okay. Thank you to you. In the name of God, hello everybody, and good morning, and welcome to my presentation on behalf of Ferdusi University of Mashhad. Allow me to extend a warm welcome to you. And first of all, I have to thank the University of Basra for providing this opportunity for us. I strongly believe that this collaboration between our university increase our knowledge and spread peace in the region that we live. Let me briefly introduce myself. My name is Sayyid Ali Reza Hussein Kahaj or Kah. I'm an associate professor of exercise physiology and academic staff at Ferdowsi University of Mashhad. I'm delighted to be here today to talk to you about sports supplements as one of the most important issue in physical education and sport science. Today, we are talking about factor affecting athletic performance, definition of a sport supplements, classification of a sport supplements, prevalence, the use of sport supplements, pros and cons of a sport supplements or advantage or disadvantage of a sport supplements, the four essential questions about the sport supplements, adulteration and fraud of a sport supplement, and summarize and conclusion at the end. Let's look at the main factor affecting or related to athletic performance. As you see in this figure, there are a lot of factors that affecting or related to athletic or human performance. For example, heredity or genetic is one of them. Training or exercise training or practice maybe is the most important factor. Nutrition and dietary intake, as you know, the sports supplements is a subcategory of sports nutrition. The coaching, trainer, and the team behind um, athletic or athletes Injuries that uh, may occur in every sport. Rest and recovery strategy is very important for performance. Psychological uh, markers, psychological factors like motivation, like anxiety, like goal setting, etc., are very important to human performance. Facilities and support, facilities like exercise equipment and exercise goods and support, for example, social support, for example, parent support or government support, it's another factor that influences performance. These are some of the factors that directly or indirectly affect human or athletic performance. Uh, I categorize these factors in two main subcategories, modifiable factors and non-modifiable factors. Modifiable factors are including the elements like nutrition, exercise training, rest and recovery strategies, and social support. And non-modifiable factors are including anthropometric measure like height, like body type, and genetic. For example, fast twitch versus slow twitch muscle fibers that determine genetically and we can't modify them. Gender, female versus male, and some environmental factors like air pollution. You know, one of the most important problems, for example, here in Iran, in big cities like Tehran or in our city, Mashhad, is air pollution that directly affects the human performance. So, 
we can manipulate some of these and we can't manipulate some of the others. In this presentation, we have to focus on modifiable factors and in this field, we exactly focus on nutrition and sport supplements. From a physiological point of view, we can summarize the... Sorry. Uh, as I told, from a physiological point of view, there are three main essential factors that affecting performance or well-being and health. Training, nutrition, rest and recovery. As you see in this pyramid, nutrition and rest and recovery are the base for training. I mean, we take nutrition and we take rest and recovery to train. And the most important thing in this pyramid is training. And nutrition and rest and recovery support training. Let's look at the training. As you know, I'm sure you know that the training is the most important factor that affects human performance. Andres Erickson, in 1999, present a hypothesis. He believed it takes 10,000 hours of deliberate practice to become an expert in almost anything such as the sport, for example, in music, in art, in painting, in sculpture, or even in scientific, for example, in mathematics or in physics, in other disciplines. And also in a sport, you have to train, you have to deliberate practice 10,000 hours. For example, imagine a kid that starts uh, exercise from age of 10. He or she has to train 10 years, 50 weeks a year, and 20 hours per week to cover 10,000 hour training to become an, for example, Olympian, to become an athlete in professional level in for example, in soccer for World Cup, to participate in World Cup. Or for example, for weightlifting, for weightlifting to participate in World Championship. However, there are some discrepancy and there are some opposite opinion for this hypothesis. I personally believe that generally this hypothesis is true. My personal experience tells me that when I look at some Iranian professional athletes, for example, Bedad Salimi, Hossein Reza Zadeh, or for example, Ali Doi, as you know, for the other athletes in soccer, uh, they, uh, they covered 10,000, at least 10,000 hours to become a champion. But I have to emphasize in this keyword, in this phrase, deliberate practice, not any other training. For example, if you just train hard, it can be guaranteed to be uh, to product or to produce in uh, champions. You have to train and practice deliberately. Me, it means. You have to train purposefully. You have to train in a systematic program, in a systematic training program with, um, uh, with respect to essential, uh, uh, essential practice, essential uh, principle of practice. For example, you have to uh, do overload, progressive overload, rest and recovery, uh, tapering, warm-up, cool-down, uh, periodization, like, for example, you know, linear periodization versus non-linear or undulating periodization. 
I mean, you have to practice deliberately, purposefully, and systematic to be a champion. So, the training is the most important factor that affects our human performance. As any and anything, can substitute by training. We have a, a phrase "nature versus nurture," means heredity versus environmental factors. Uh, please look at this table. I think this is one of the most important tables I have ever seen in uh, literature, in the review of literature. And Kujada in 2015 summarized with some physiological parameter, parameter uh, and their heritability based on the uh, view of many experts in the world. For example, in view to max, the first parameter, the authors, the scientists believe that between 73 to 93 percent of view to max determine heritability. And this rate for early productivity is about 15 to 80 percent. For lactate production, is about 81 percent and for example if you look at the uh, last row for the coordination is about 40 to 50 percent it's very important to know the heritability of any physiological parameter because it's very close to trainability if a parameter has high heritability it means that the training has less influence of them. And it's very important for talent identification in sports. You have to put a key in the right sports. The right sport means the sport that he or she is appropriate and is appropriate for this sport, for that sport, based on his or her, her Heritability. Uh, in this regard, uh, I'm sure you know Professor Asran, one of the father of exercise physiology. Uh, he believed it's very fantastic uh, sentence. A person wishing to become an Olympic champion had to be very careful when choosing their parents. Obviously, we can't. Uh, choose our parents. It's like a joke, but it's true. Also, Hawkins believe if you want your kid to, to be great athletes, marry a great athlete. In this picture, you can see a couple of our uh, champion, uh, Mrs. Leila Rajabi and her husband, Paymar Rajabi, that they are champion in track and field. Uh, in this field, based on this sentence and this opinion, we, we, we expected that they have a child, their child have, has a potential to be a champion because heritability has a strong effect on human performance. And you know, uh, many scientists believe that the champions uh, are the, the champions are determined genetically and also the nutrition and training can improve and the can facilitate the passing this way. Uh, I think there are some students in audience. I ask you to very look at and carefully look at this figure. It's one of the best figures that I have ever seen. This figure summarizes the main factor that affecting sport performance: the training, carbohydrate, anabolic steroid as a drug, blood doping erythropoietin or EPO, fluid intake, caffeine, creatine, and other supplements. I think this is the bottom line 
of our presentation. This figure again emphasizes the effect of training in our performance or in sport performance. As you see in this figure, the training has the effect between 10 to 3,000 percent effect. While carbohydrate and anabolic acids only have 20 percent effect on the sport performance. Blood doping, you know, many athletes in aerobic events like cycling, like swimming, like marathon running, use blood doping to improve their performance. But blood doping only increase four to eight percent their performance, not more than. EPO uh, as a one of the another uh, doping agent has only eight percent effect on performance. And uh, for example, caffeine and creatine, you can see in the figure that the, their effect is very minimal. While the effect of training on performance is very huge. And other supplements almost has no effect on our performance. So, this figure tells us we have to focus on the elements or on the factor that has main effect on our performance not on the elements or factor that less less affect in our performance and the supplements are in the category of factors that their effect on performance is very minimal uh, what are dietary or a sports supplement Dietary Supplement Health Education Act defined dietary supplement as a product intended to supplement the diet containing one or more of the following vitamins, minerals, herb or other botanical, amino acid, dietary substance, and a concentrate, metabolite, constituent, extract, or combination of above in the form of tablets, powder, soft gel, bars, liquid, etc. Another definition for dietary or sports supplements is a food, food component, nutrient, or non-food component that is purposefully ingested in addition to the habitually consumed diet with the aim of achieving a specific health or performance benefits. So, the supplements are not drug and, and they don't use for medical care or prevent disease or cure this disease. They just use as a supplement beside the diet. There are many classifications for supplement in the literature. I just uh, want to tell you two of the most important classifications that I uh, see in the literature. The USSA has examined the supplement commonly used in elite sports, has categorized them according to their effectiveness into four categories, group A, group B, group C, and group D. Let's look at briefly in this group. Group A are the supplement that recommended under supervision. They are normally over-the-counter and you can uh, buy them from the drug store or pharmacy or from grocery store even. These are including uh, antioxidant supplements like vitamin C and E, bicarbonate and citrate, calcium supplement, creatine, 
electrolyte replacement supplement, liquid meal supplement, multivitamins and minerals, sports bar, sports drink, and sports sports gel. Sorry. I wanted to tell you, you can make at home a sports bar, a sport drink easily and for example if you mix um, if you make a mixture of honey sesame chocolate and some kind of nuts like for example almond or pistachio you can make um, a sports bar that is very delicious it has a high calorie and full of protein and most important no worry, you have no worry about the legality or about the side effects because you make these sport bars at your home with normal and with very healthy ingredients that can uh, buy easily from any grocery store. Group B supplements are the supplements recommended only after approval and under strict condition. These are including beta-alanine, glutamine, HMB or beta hydroxy uh, butyrate, methyl butyrate, probiotics, ribose, iron supplement, and coffee. Please pay attention to that. For example, you can use iron supplement for coffee but after approval and under strict condition. I have a, a student that he, that she is a member of national team in, uh, in water sports and um, he, she has a tachycardia. And uh, she told me, I think maybe two or three months ago that uh, her coach uh, suggest her to take coffee but you know she has tachycardia and uh, the and the ingestion of caffeine in patient that has tachycardia it's very harmful it's very dangerous in this regard this category emphasized that you can take this supplement but under a serious condition, under the supervision by a medical doctor. Group C supplements are the supplements that are likely to work and are not recommended. These are including branching amino acid, you know, like leucine, isoleucine, and moline, and other free amino acids. Carnitine, that you know, unfortunately, the use of carnitine is very prevalent among female athletes or among female generally because they want to reduce their weight and shape their body and they believe that the carnitine can help them but but we know that the carnitine almost has no effect on weight reduction as has a lot of side effects another uh, supplement in this Category are chromium picolinate, coenzyme Q10, uh, cordycin, and ginseng, inosine, nitric oxide supplement, oxygen, oxygen booster, and pyruvate. Please pay attention, they are not recommended. Group D supplement are the supplement that not recommended at all, and they are banned. For example, ephedra. Another name of uh, ephedrine is mahuar, androsendium, strychnine, tribulus. These are the supplements that are not recommended and they are banned. It means that if you use this supplement, maybe your doping test be positive and you know very sanctioned and uh, is um, imposed on the athlete that the uh, uh, doping test is positive. And 
classification for supplements are based on muscle building effect. These are categorized as four categories. The first category is the supplement that are apparently effective. Means this supplement, the literature, the research confirm this, that this product, this supplement are effective and safe. Like weight gain powders, like protein, like HMB, beta hydroxy beta methyl butyrate. These are the supplement that the research confirm that they are apparently effective. Another category, the second category, are the supplement that possibly effective. Supplement that initial studies only some studies support the theoretical rationale, but that more research is needed to determine how the supplement may affect training or performance. Among these supplements, we can name brand chain amino acid, essential amino acid, and gluten. They are possibly effective, not definitely or apparently effective. The third category are the supplements that too early to tell their effectiveness. Supplement that the theory may make sense, but there is insufficient research or studies to support the use at this time. We have no a lot of research to support their effectiveness. Like alpha KG, KIC, GHRP, isoflavones, and zinc and magnesium aspartate. Please pay attention. They have they maybe have side effects and dangerous effects on your health. And the fourth category are the supplement that apparently ineffective. Supplement that the theoretical rationale make little scientific sense and for research has clearly shown to be ineffective. Like boron, chromium, or CLA. CLA is very famous and unfortunately many athletes in, in Iran uh, use CLA that draws some theoretical rationale behind them but as you see here research has clearly shown they have no any effects and maybe they have some side effects as well uh, we don't have enough time to uh, investigate detail of this table I ask you especially uh, Dear students, please uh, look at carefully to this table. Summary of categorization of the dietary supplement based on available literature. Uh, this table provided by Crider in 2010. Uh, we are going to just uh, investigate some of uh, these supplements that are, I think, more famous in clubs or gyms. For example, in weight loss supplement that uh, are very interested by uh, female athletes, for example, in this category, in the uh, middle column, for apparently effective and generally safe, you can see low calorie foods. It's obvious. The low calorie foods can help you to reduction you to reduce your weight and possibly effective. In the, in the second row, you can see the possibly effective supplement like green tea extract that we use uh, usually in Iraq, for example, in India and also in Iraq. And for the supplement too early to tell, we can uh, tell one of them like, for example, yes, DHEA, that too early to tell uh, the effectiveness of this uh, supplement and apparently not effective and or dangerous like L-carnitine as I told you before before the L-carnitine has a lot of side effects 
on the heart and it's very dangerous please keep it away and um, for example for performs performance enhancement we can look at the for example protein as one of the most important and most famous uh, supplement that obviously increase the performance we are increase muscle mass and strength but there are some caution for using uh, creatine for example the people that have kidney problem must care about use the uh, creatine because there are some reports about the cancer of kidney uh, from the athletes or from the people that use protein for a long term, for a, um, for example, for many years. Another uh, enhancement, enhancement performance supplement, for example, is uh, in the first row, apparently effective. Uh, we can see the water and sport drink that you can make it at home or bicarbonate for endurance athletes or caffeine you know caffeine is very it has a very <coughs> sorry effective on performance yeah and both in strength gain and endurance sports uh you know that a sport nutrition market size um as you see in this figure from 2016 to estimated to 2028 as you see in this figure the market size every year has progressive and this trend is uh, going on and every year the product the produce of uh, supplement by manufacturer increase all over the world and we have to care many of the manufacturer are just looking for the money the health of the people is not important for them please pay attention what about the prevalence of sports supplements and the source of information uh, based on a review of literature the prevalence of a sports supplement depends on the type of sports level of competition and the definition of supplement supplements between 40 to 100 percent of athletes typically use supplements in my opinion and based on our uh, knowledge and our experience here in Iran I can tell you almost all athletes in Iran use one of the supplements close to 100 personal athletes here unfortunately use supplements and unfortunately the coach are the primary source of information regarding supplements and encouraging the consumption so we have to increase the knowledge of the coaches and the trainer by holding workshop and lecture presentation and uh, even holding a very short educational class or course for them to increase their knowledge about the supplement about their effect and their side effects what are the advantage of taking a sports supplement a some sports supplement may be benefit to some athletes in some specific contest not for us athletes for all athletes in all situation some sports supplement may be of benefit to some athletes in some benefit context for example iron for female athletes or distance runners are recommended not for any other athlete or for all athletes in all sports just for some sport in some situation 
Supplement provide a convenient and time-efficient solution to achieving a necessary intake of key nutrition, especially immediately after training. The supplements uh, containing protein and carbohydrate that are very important for accelerate recovery after immediately after exercise. You can use the beverage supplement after exercise uh, to fasten or to accelerate their recovery. But the disadvantage of taking a sports supplement are very high. The first is they are very expensive and they are not cost benefit. The second disadvantage is most supplements that are over the counter are illegal because of contamination with banned substance either by law or stated by international sport governing bodies. The third one is many are harmful to athletes and they have a lot of side effects. The fourth is most probably ineffective at all. Just we waste our money to buying for buying their supplement, this supplement. And the fifth is lack of scientific evidence. They are just some of this advantage of taking sports supplements. If uh, you just learn these four questions from my presentation, it's very uh, I'm very satisfied. The, there are some uh, essential questions before taking any sports supplement. What are these essential questions? The first one is, is this supplement effective? Effective based on the purpose that you are looking for. For example, for weight reduction or for weight gain for improved performance or for accelerated recovery. Is it effective? Is it really effective? The second question is, is the supplement safe or it has some side effects? Because we train, we do exercise for improving our health, for prevention disease, for treatment, of some disease but many sports supplements has a lot of side effects and they have potential to produce some kind of disease in our body for example cardiovascular disease or some of cancers the third question is is it legal based on anti-doping rules because many supplements contaminated with illegal uh, substance. And the fourth question is, is moral based on ethical issue? For example, for a sportsmanship, is it moral that I use a supplement that give me a strong or marvelous uh, Benefit against uh, my opponents in the field is not moral. Uh, one of the most important issues in uh, supplement use are the claims. Are the supplement claim valid? Don't trust one source of information or even one article. You have to look uh, for many article and article in scientific journal that support the claim of that supplement the effect of that supplement look for more detail look for more article sorry or the opinion of experts in the field of nutrition or exercise for example the student have to ask the question about the effectiveness or their side effect of 
as both supplement from their professor in the university. Please pay attention to these claims. This phrase are very highlight in many sports supplements. Quick improvement, such as increasing muscle strength or mass over only a day or two. Secret ingredients or formula. Usually, these phrases are deceptive and flashy claim, and they are just advertisement. Not they are not true. Popular TV personalities or a star athlete as a sport person in advertising. Where did the claim come from? From the scientific journal or from the magazine, newspaper, book, or on internet? Or it is from a company selling a product? They are not honest. They are not honest. The information in magazine and brochures about nutrition, nutritional ecogenes is not regulated. It may be exaggerated or, or inaccurate. Please pay attention. Many advertising in magazine or on internet about a sports supplement are exaggerated and, in, and inaccurate. Uh, are the supplement trade valid from another point of view? There are some questions. Is it reasonable? The information present makes sense? Are the information presented make sense? They are logic. If not, discredit. Who making? Who's making the claim? A company? An athlete? A magazine? Or a scientific institute? For example, like FDA or NHS or WHO, who has done the benefits? By newspaper, by internet, or no, by, uh, by scientific uh, research or academic staff? Is it based on sound science? If a certain claims to be based on scientific study, think about who did the study? What relationship they have to the product? What are the risks? What are the side effects? Are the supplements? Another important issue is, is the supplement safe at recommended dose? Many nutritional supplements are safe at low doses, but they have adverse effects at high doses. For example, caffeine, you know, Caffeine in the doses of around 200 or 300 milligram per day is almost safe and effective. But the doses above 400 milligram per day is very really dangerous. Excess dietary iron may lead to hemochromatosis and eventually deterioration of liver function. Why? Excess zinc may decrease HDL cholesterol, the good cholesterol in our body levels, and increase cardiovascular diseases. So, maybe some supplements will be safe in low doses, but they are not safe at high doses or mega doses. Uh, adulteration and fraud in sports supplements. Please pay attention. Please carefully pay attention to this issue. It's very, very important. And uh, I have a lot of experience. And there are a lot of literature and articles support this idea. For example, Reuters in 2010 announced and report that many popular dietary supplements contain ingredients that may cause cancer, heart problems, liver, or kidney damage. But U.S. stores sell them anyway, and Americans spend 
millions of dollars on them. Despite the natural label carried by many of the supplements, many are contaminated. Of the more than 54,000 dietary supplement products in the Natural Medicine Comprehensive Database, only about one third have some level of safety and effectiveness that is supported by scientific evidence. Only one third. And two thirds of them are not safe. Uh, another important issue is, mis is mislabeling of a sports supplement. For example, I want to just uh, tell you one research in this issue. At the liver meeting in 2017 in Washington, D.C., the researcher have announced that we have found that dietary supplements are a common cause of liver injury. Analyzing, they analyze more than around 741 supplements that they, their investigation show only 90 of 1200 supplements show accurate label. Uh, it's uh, half of supplements show accurate label content. The rate of mislabeling was 80% for 10 analyzed estradiol ingredients, 54% for 20 vitamin ingredients, and about 50% for 122 botanical ingredients. So, mislabeling on the supplement is a very important issue. At the liver meeting 2017 in Washington, D.C., also announced that the rate of mislabeling by product was around 80% for, for 34 bodybuilder products, 42% for 36 weight loss products, and 60% for five energy boosters and 51% for 35 general health and well-being supplements. So, be careful. Many supplements are mislabeled. I wanted to tell you and share my knowledge about contamination just based on one or two articles. Of the 24 products tested, 23 contaminated the street, including noun anabolic agent that you know uh, from the list of WADA, WADA, the S1 are anabolic streets. 16 of these contaminated streets that were different to those indicated on the packaging and one product contained no acid, just one product. Almost all product, 100, almost all 100, contaminated with the street. International studies have shown that 12 to 50% of all dietary supplements intended for people who exercise and engage in a sport contain substance prohibited by WADA. It's very important. I know some athletes in Iran, in national level, that they consume supplements, ordinary supplements, that they uh, bought from uh, pharmacy or from drug stores. After they participated in international competition or match, and after the taking blood test, their result was positive. And it was very strange because the supplement that they used 
were contaminated with illegal products. And this is the table of one of this article. You know, in the first column in the left, the countries, all countries are European and American and developed countries like Netherlands, Australia, UK, USA, Italy, Spain, Germany, Belgium, France, Norway, Switzerland, Sweden, and Hungary. And if, uh, in the next column, from the left, you can see the number of products, totally 634 products collected from these countries, and the percentage of positive tests have shown in the first column from the right. Totally, around 50% of the products has positive test and it's very dangerous from national level you know uh, the, the government for the government it's very important to have no positive test in the international competition let's go to summarize and conclusion first of all there isn't any substitute for proper training and deliberate practice. As I told you before, the most important and the most effective factor on human performance is deliberate practice. So increase your knowledge about training, about principle of training. The second is, don't take any supplement without consulting a doctor because of their soft effect. If you have any balanced diet, if you have a balanced diet, most probably you no need to take supplements. Generally, a sports supplement have no or little effect. Only few athletes in some situation as I told you before, for example, for iron, may need a sports supplement. Many sports supplements sports. mislead. And many supplements are not FDA approved. Thank you very much for your attention. Uh, I tried to increase a line to your knowledge. And thank you again for participating in this presentation, and if you have any question, I'm ready to answer. My lecture is finished. Can you hear me? Thank you very much, Dr. Ali. If there is any question for Dr. Ali. Naam, Dr. Usam, father. Thank you for uh, Dr. Ali uh, for this uh, wonderful uh, lecture. Uh, and my questions uh, uh, are there really any side effect to use creatine supplement? This is a question, uh, the one uh, question. Uh, and uh, the uh, another question what is the safe amount of growth hormone that I can use? as players uh, of uh, bodybuilding. Thank you.
دكتور وسام جوابك الاستاذ لو لا؟ نو 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 لحد الان لا ما جاوب اوكي خلينا نشوف وين راح السلام عليكم اخوان الساده الاساتذه الافاضل اعزاء الطلبه الظاهر الاستاذ المحاضر صار عنده مشكله بالتقنيه بالنت وفرج بعد ما ما دخل ويانا يعني فاذا اكو اي سؤال تقدرون تتركونه بالتعليقات وممكن الاستاذ اذا رجع يزوره واذا ما عندكم سؤال نقدر نغادر القاعه الان لانه عندنا محاضره الثانيه الساعه بالعشره ونص السلام عليكم استاذ كيان عليكم السلام دكتور صباح حياك الله الله يحفظك ويسلمك الله يحفظك بداية الحمد لله على السلامة على الجميع على طلبتنا واساتذتنا وحضرتك والاستاذ الزار وعلى السيد رئيس الجامعة الله يحفظك جزيلا لهذا المجهود الرائع اللي جاي تبذله الله يحفظك وللرئاسة ولتدريسينا ولطلبتنا اللي اللي احنا نشوفهم متابعين وجيدين نتمنى لهم التوفيق وان شاء الله اي سؤال او استفسار الاخوه كتبوه بالتعليقات الظاهر هم الاخوه تدري نتهم مو حتى بمؤتمرنا كانت عندهم مشاكل قوه حليناها صحيح نتمنى لهم ان شاء الله نتمنى لهم التوفيق وشكرا جزيلا لحضرتك واذا بعد تدري اذا طلبه يبدو لها لان ورانا 10 ونص محاضره اي نعم دكتور صحيح صحيح دكتور شكرا, شكرا جزيلا دكتور يعني. ممنونين دكتور شكرا جزيلا نيابة عن السيد رئيس الجامعة المحترم ومجلس الجامعة والسادة العمداء وفريق عمل برنامج السادة الزار نتقدم بالشكر الجزيل لجميع الأساتذة الأفاضل اللي شاركونا بالمحاضرة اليوم ولجميع طلبتنا الأعزاء أملينا أن نلتقي بكم في محاضرات أخرى والسلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته